Hi and welcome back to my channel. I'm Tony and I am building another Armatec tank. This time it is the Jag Panther 38 or the Hetzer. And in today's session, we're going to do some more building. Um, the last few sessions were all about getting the track set up and driving correctly. Um, and then, you know, in the last couple of videos, I, I showed you how I got, I went around to do that. Um, it seemed like it was a, a lengthy process, but it, in fact, it was a lengthy process, but an absolutely necessary process to get this right because the last thing you want to do is to carry on putting on the side skirtings and all the rest of it and then realize that you've got an issue with the sprockets um, and if you would if you did have an issue with the sprockets you'd have to take it all off uh, to get to it that I don't so far I'm really really pleased um, I'm happy with the way the tank is performing because I did a subsequent road test away from camera and it's performing perfectly although I'm still getting used to driving with two sticks but I'll sort that out when it's all synchronized and I'll go back to a single stick driving um, so today it's all about carrying on with the detailing the, the big fun part of building one of these kits so there's a there's quite a lot of uh, detail I mean there's there's grab handles and there's tool holders and everything to go on plus the skirtings now the skirtings will need to be painted uh, on one side um, ahead of going onto the tank because as you can imagine if they're on the tank here you're not going to get paint behind it um, and as well as that I'm going to try and get some dry brushing uh, done on some of these wheels just to get a little bit of weathering done because once the tank is static and the skirtings are on I'm not going to get the paint as I want to or to distress these wheels so quite a lot to get achieved or do in this session I'm going to try and get through it all um, and so what I'll do is I, I normally do I will reposition the camera and uh, we'll get started right so just want to do a little bit of weathering on these wheels so what I've got is I've got um, a bit of a mixing pot here I've got some metallic acrylic gunmetal paint and I've got some dark brown to mix it with I've mixed it already and I've sort of there's quite a lot of water in here um, and we're going to do a little bit of wet brushing and dry brushing just to try and create the effect so the first thing we're going to do is just give these wheels I've already given that a little bit of a wash and I'm just going to go around with and just let it do its thing find its little corners go around here then dry the brush off and then just start working it through don't be worried about where the paint's going to go this is the bit you should just it's a bit of freedom here artistic license and all that and then I'm just going to go and, go and use the, the rag if you like just to to wipe off the excess what you want it to do is to sort of to fill the little crevices down here um, and in here you just want that sort of kind of yeah, greasy effect that you'd expect to see on these wheels we're going to do this and then we're going to go back over them and we're going to do some dry brushing to bring some metallic sort of a little bit of metallic finish through so that just makes the wheels look a little bit grubby I'm not sure if that's coming out on the camera or not but um, we'll persevere and as I said, once the skirtings are on, you're not going to be able to get to these wheels to, to do these properly. Just giving it a bit of a... It looks terrible initially, but just perseverance. All we're trying to do is just get that effect that it's got, you know, months and months and months of grease build up and just general you know muck and um, I like doing this sort of weathering on I used to do a lot of my fixed or static models my dioramas so that's the first process of that done now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go a little bit heavier with the metallic finish so what I'll do is that I'm going to get myself I mean, my lids are all different colours, but they're all clean. Just put a little bit of that metallic on there. Dry the brush off. Get plenty of paint on the brush. And then get as much of the paint off the brush. By putting in it, I'll just get another bit of that rag. Just 
keep that dabbing yeah, and get more paint on the brush. I will be doing a whole session about um, when I do the tools, how I paint and weather the tools. What I'm trying to do is get as much of that paint off as possible. And then when you, when you sort of just start going around, I don't know if you can see that picking up on the camera, it starts to sort of pick up some of the highlights of the nuts and some of the other parts of the sort of the, the raised areas if you like just gives it that kind of nice metallic and we'll go over this with a little bit of brown doing a similar kind of thing just to replicate you know sort of a little bit of oxidation and rust so that's that um, probably do the same on this one there's probably enough paint on the brush still And this is the bit that you should just feel free to you know play around with it you're not going to do much harm if you mess it up you can always repaint over it but i'm fairly happy with the way that's coming out obviously we're doing this on the ambient light or false light in the garage um, when this is outside this will pick up light and do and look and feel so much better than than that so that's the first kind of going over. But you know, sure, I'm not sure if that's actually picking up on the camera, guys, so apologies for that. Um, now we're going to just do a similar kind of thing. Uh, actually, we've got to do this one, haven't we? Just some paint on that. Dry the paint off. Now, I know everybody's got their own sort of painting techniques. So this isn't the way to do it. This is just the way I do it. And just lightly brushing over all the highlighted areas. You'll probably show up better when I do the brown with this. Now with the brown, I'm not going to um, I'm not going to actually do any other other than I'm not going to wash it I'm just going to use this to sort of highlight some of the, the metallic parts of it and we'll get in and do that we'll do some work on these springs as well that's probably enough paint on the tissue Just want to try and pick up the, the the edges. Just get that sort of kind of I mean all this weather's in time anyway. I mean the tiger looks I mean I didn't do anything like this on the tiger, but over the time and use it's kind of uh found its own age if you like. So that's that do something similar to that I'm just going to use the paint that's already on the on the bit of kitchen roll here to help me just highlight the bits that I want so we do this it's just picking up the the raised areas of the wheel again I'm not sure how well that's coming out in the camera or not pretty good I think it's a bit overzealous for that that's fine that's that's fine it works just move that round that's fine absolutely just all part and parcel of how you know you want it to just look you don't want it to look flat now let's get in and do some of the work on the springs In particular, I want to try and pick up the the fact that there's many levels of springs underneath here. Actually, you probably can't see that as well as I can, 
but it, I think it looks pretty good. I'm pleased with that. Let's just see if we can do this side. Again, it's very minimal amount of paint on the brush, just enough to leave a trace behind in the parts that you're hitting the brush with. Right, so now we'll get the brown and we do a similar kind of thing with the brown. I'm not going to bother cleaning the brush because there's only dry paint on there at the moment. So we'll just get some brown on there. This is a very dark brown. I'm just going to dab it onto the same place where I've dabbed the metallic gun metal. And we just go again. I'm just going to just give that a bit of a around with the brown. Yeah, it's probably not showing up that well on the camera. What I'll do is I'll carry on, I'll do the other side and then um, we'll we'll come back and we'll put the hubcaps back on, on the sprockets now. I'm happy with the way they're operating because I just want to get those on before I put the skirtings on as well. So um, hopefully, hopefully you can see a little bit of what we're trying to achieve here. You can just about see the brown starting to work its way through now onto the onto this base colour. Again, I'm not sure if that's actually showing up that well. But I can see it and I hope you can see it on the camera. Um, I'll carry on and uh, we'll come back to camera to finish off some of the accessories. So that's the wash coat done on both sides, uh, all the wheels. I'm not sure if the camera picks it up, but it's, it, you know, I think if we get it out in daylight, it will make a difference. Um, now there's a series of little grab rails that have to go on the side of these tanks. I've already done that side. We'll do this side in real time. And then there's some other retaining parts here to retain the tools that go on to the side of the tank here. So the first thing is there's six of these. I think it's one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, there are six of these on each side. Um, and these come in the kit um, and you just need to take these off. Little sort of the, the holder that comes with the kit. Um, and I've tested everything and you get these really small, I don't know if you can see that on the camera, let's see if I can put it in the palm of my hand, this little small hook. Uh, now what you've got to do is you just pass this through the two holes on the little, the little mount. Um, again, with the old sausage fingers, it's always a bit tricky. And then once you've got that lined up, I'm just going to put a tiny little dab of glue by each hole and then just offer these into the hole like so and I just want to hold that while I just pull that out into the distance I want it and I'm just using this as a gauge so that the distance is the same on all six. So we'll go again. These are really the sort of the finishing touches and I can I can imagine when it's all painted, you know, all these little details all sort of add to the overall finish look of the tank. And this is the enjoyable stage of the build because we know that the that the uh, the tank is operational. Um haven't received the final part of the motion pack uh, that I need to test all the gun and, and uh, get the smoke working and the sound and all that but I spoke to Armatech last week and they are sending that out to me uh, in the next few days so hopefully by the time I see you again we'll be able to test the gun do all of that and then we can finally start doing some mock welding onto the tank but it doesn't stop me from getting ahead with this stage. 
I mean, it's only, they're only small little hooks and things, but they look, they look so good when they're on the tank. And again, as I said, I just said it, repeat myself a lot, but um, when it's painted, all these little details really add to the finish, especially when you sort of start highlighting them and dry brushing them, they, um, they really stand out. So I've gone to a lot of trouble, Armatec. Just drop that, I'll find that in a minute. I go to a lot of trouble and the attention to detail when they're doing these kits is incredible. And it just seems to be going really well. Everything seems to be working as it should. I'm not sure you can actually see these going. Now let me see if I can zoom the camera in a bit. So that these are these these hooks along here. Take the camera back. The light, the light doesn't help, does it? So that's that. Just got to find that other one. It's on my beach somewhere. We will put this one on. I'll go and find the other one, and um, we'll then carry on. It's incredible how, although this tank is smaller, there's a lot of detail on it. There's a lot of detail, and I want to take my time. I don't want to mess it up. So um, I'm going to find that other one that went springing off somewhere. I'll find that. We'll get it back on, and then we'll crack on with the uh, the tool holders. Right, found the missing one. It's amazing where these things end up, um, but I've got my magnet tool out and uh, managed to find it. Uh, so now we've got a couple of clamps that need to go on, which hold on at some of the tools. That's just the first one. Um, actually, what I need to do with that is just put a tiny little bit of thread locker on that. Then we'll pass it through the relevant hole. Get the corresponding nut and just find our way through the back of the tank and see if we can pick that's it that's picked that up so that needs to be aligned it shows with this main clip pointing down not sure what it's for yet i think it's um it might just be something to do with a uh, sort of a crowbar or something like that. I think this one holds. Or could be the shovel. Yeah, it's probably the shovel because there's a retainer here for the shovel. So that's probably the clip for the handle of the shovel. Now you can bend these in and out to suit. Um, but I really want to get these painted ahead of time. So I'll go, we'll just get the other one now, which is this other little clamp here. Load that up. Pop that through the hole in the thread locker. And I think this one is for the crowbar. I'll be doing a separate video just about the tools because they're a whole pack uh, from arm packs um, and they need to be cleaned up, painted and separately to the tank. So that's the two of those clips. We'll go on now and we'll do the shovel. Right, um, <laughs> that was my son creeping in the background there. You know he's a videographer, right? You wouldn't think that he uh, understands how the camera works. But anyway, he's uh, just popped in to say hello. Um, so apologies for that. Um, he might even edit that out. Who knows? So So anyway, this is the, the remainder part of the, the shovel. So it's a, just a, a, sink, a, a bracket with two fixings in. Um, same deal as before. Just put a bit of thread locker on that. And I will try not to block the camera when I do this. So just make sure you've got it the right orientation. 
and this is the white orientation and again just have to sorry I know I'm trying to do this so you can see it but awkward and just sort of feel that nut from behind just keep that quite loose for now I'll show you the armor packs kit in a moment um, really smart kit from armor packs pretty similar to what I did on the tiger and it consists of a, a few pieces that help finish off the tank So that's the shovel and that's going to be i believe for the there's a crop there's a crowbar and there's a couple of bra brackets that need to go on here um and these are these little square pockets uh i've already preloaded with with the fixing on the inside because that was a uh, jolly awkward um and anyway so we'll put these on and then hopefully so one goes goes in there like that and the reciprocating nut on the back now I'm not going to be able to use my tool to 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 uh, tighten that not really much I can get one or two turns on it in there I might just um, see if I can get a socket on the end of that no batteries are in the way actually just about all a little bit awkward and a little bit fiddly Keep that keep that loose for now because I want that to I want to make sure that the, when the crowbar goes in it fits so we'll go again <clears throat> actually just check that that fits the, there's the right next size up right better right the first time all right so let's get the other one on I mean I'm not sure you want to see this but um, I think from what I understand again like if you're finding this tedious guys please please feel forward uh, feel free to fast forward but these are the, the little laborious monotonous little jobs that have to be done It's all part of the build. I'll just keep that freeze me loose for now. Yeah. The batteries are in the way on the other side, so you can't really get the socket on there. But I'm just holding it tight so I can just get a bit of a turn on it. So that's that's it. They're a bit loose. I will tighten those up. But so you get this wonderful little kit from armor packs um and i will do a separate video all about that um, and there's also a crowbar i think it's a crowbar or a short lever they call it and that that actually goes in its final resting place is somewhere like somewhere like that and that's obviously got to be painted and cleaned up and made to look as if it's a real tool. And you can see here that this needs to be clamped together a bit more. But I'll do that once it's in position. I'm probably better off doing it. 
we'll work it out. <laughs> All a bit awkward, but that's that's the intention. That goes in there, and then the um, the arm packs kit itself, which I will do a separate video about cleaning it up and everything else, is made up. And you get inside this, you get uh, the jack, which needs a lot of work. That's a, a 3D printed or resin cast uh, piece. Um, the few metal parts um, that all needs to be cleaned up, glued together, and then painted. And then I don't know if you can see there. That's the handle of the the spade or the shovel in there. That's the head of the shovel. And then the idea is when this all goes together, that that will fit there. And the handle and sort of hold it in position like so um, but as I said this all needs a bit of work uh, need to tap or drill a little hole into this so that the handle fixes in like so um, and then it's all got to be cleaned up where it's just been cast um, and painted so that's another exercise altogether so we'll put all that back in that bag I'll tighten these up and then we'll get on to the skirting right time to do the skirtings Okay, so uh, I've done, I've, I've already mounted the skirtings on the other side to their brackets, but I haven't put them on the tank because they've got to be painted. But I wanted to just talk you through what I'm doing here. So in the pack, you get six total. You get two ends, uh, front and back, and you get two middle pieces here. And then you get corresponding brackets that go with the, the skirting pieces. Now, just be careful that when you open up the bags, you don't mix them up and, and inadvertently fix them to the wrong positions. So this one here going to the rear of the tank, for instance, because it's angled, I know you can't see it, it's outside a camera shot. Because it's angled, these are also angled to compensate for that, where the others are all straight. Uh, when I say straight, they're, they're, they're obviously they're angled to take, you know, to dress the skirting over the wheels, but they're straight in line like this, whereas you'll see that these ones come off at an angle. So just be careful of that. So I've just lined them up to where the fixings are going to go. Now then I was contemplating on how do I put this onto the tank because you've got a M2.5 gauge uh, bolt that goes through, hex fixing, that goes through the hull of the tank with a nut on the end of it. And that's what locks the bracket into position. So that bracket will go into that position and the skirting is dressed accordingly. However, I want to put these brackets onto the skirting piece because I just think it's going to be easier for me to mount the brackets onto the skirting and then hook them into position rather than putting them putting the brackets on and then for trying to get my hands underneath to hold the nuts and all the you know the usual sort of difficulties. The only reason I can't do that straight away is that the hole the this hole here which is to basically take the hex fitting uh, you can see there's a slot there as well, so it's a, it's a hanging fixing. The only problem is that this hole is slightly too small for the head of the hex nut. Um, so I've, what I've done on the other side is I've reamed that out and opened the hole up so it slots over the top of the hex screw. So that is the principle. Uh, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to attach the brackets to the skirting panels. Then we're going to get them painted and then we're going to get them onto the tank and we can see how straightforward it is to put them onto the tank. Right, so we'll do this one first. This will be the front one. And these brackets are offered up underneath, on the underside. Just line up the holes. And then you have these 2.5 or M2.5 button fixings that go through the front. And you have a corresponding nut that goes on the back. And now with these, I'm going to pull this. These are slotted. Then you can see that. I'm going to pull that tight so it's as it's, it's far down as possible. So it's as, in its effectively its lowest position when it's on the tank. Um, because I want them all to be the same height. And I don't want to have to mess around adjusting the height with these once they're on to the side of the tank. So... As before, just a ton of fixings to go onto these. And then once I've got these, so I've just pushed that down. 
just let's tighten that up. I'm not going to tighten them up too much because there's a little bit of movement on them, and you might need that to be able to line up the the fixings on the on the front of the tank on well throughout the tank. So we'll just go and do that again. I won't film this whole process because this is a uh, would technically well it would be deemed is extremely boring. So I'll do this one, and then um, I'll magically <laughs> come back to you when they're all done, and then we'll get on to the painting. Obviously, before we paint these, they need to be cleaned up, but I'm only painting the back um, because I just don't because they're mild steel. They will rust over time if you're not careful. So I want to get a coat of paint on the back, more so to protect them, but also it just I, I will not be able to get any paint on them. Excuse me. Trying to do this so I, you, you can see it as well. Yeah, I just want to get once they're on the tank, you never get paint to them. So now's the time to paint them. Well, I think it is anyway. And then, effectively, that will be the the main build of the tank complete. Let me just get my fingers to work. It's just so small. I'll tell you what. How about I load it up first on that. If you suffer from the same syndrome I have with the old sausage fingers, um, you know, sympathy goes out to you. Just have to persevere. Again, as before, just going to push that down into its lowest position. And then don't tighten them up too much, just get them so that they don't, this bracket doesn't move. That's that. I just want that little bit of movement on there to uh, to allow me to when I install this onto the tank. So that one will effectively be going there once I've reamed these holes out. So I'll get on and I'll do the other two and I'll be straight back to camera. So that's all the brackets fitted and as you can see that this is the end, this is the one with the angle on. I don't know if that's you, yeah, it's, not, it's more noticeable now as you can see in the camera. So I've just got to ream out these holes. I've already done these four, just need to do these last two holes. Just want to make these big enough so that the the head of one of these hex fixings can pass through um, and at the moment it, it, it can't um, now if you're if you're gonna install these and put the fixings through here ahead of this you don't need to do this but I think this is the probably the easiest way to do it so I'm just using a, a drill called this drill and I've just got a um, it's actually a 5.5 mil diameter bit and it's just small enough to pass through that hole initially and now I'm just going to use the drill excuse the noise just to slowly open that hole up just working the drill up and down just to just carefully open that hole and just check check to see if that will now pass through And it does. So just need to do the other side of that. Obviously, it goes without saying, just take care when you're doing this. And don't forget your goggles. through and it does brilliant right so the next thing really is to get these painted um, pop that drill away get these painted get them pro cleaned primed and then painted um, but I'm only going to paint the inside face at this stage and then we can get them hooked onto the tank and then we'll see how they all align
Right, so that's them all painted on the inside, um, as you saw. Now, um, it, the theory is I should just be able to slot these into position onto the tank and then tighten up these nuts. I've gone ahead and put them all on in place. So we're gonna go ahead now and uh, go for the very first one. So this is the back one. And I'm hoping that this is gonna be reasonably straightforward. That's gone in there. That's gone in there. So that's it hooked into place. Now the theory is I can just get behind that and, and tighten that up. And that's it. Just do the same with that one. But it seems to be that seems to be fine. I might have to bend it a little bit just to get some alignment on it, but that's the first one in. So, so far, so good. So that's the plan, it seems to be working, we'll carry on. So I've got the same detail from the behind of this. And now I just need to, um, try to nudge that fixing out. And we'll go for the middle one. Probably go for this one on the end first. Okay, that's in. And we go for this one. And that's sort of in. Uh, the nuts come off the back of that, but not too much of a problem. Uh, so I just hopefully that will just line up where it's supposed to. Classic. They could have done with being a little bit longer. I might actually, do you know what? I might actually swap these bolts out for something a little bit longer. I'll do that and I'll come straight back to camera. So that's just, I just put a 10 mil bolt in there, a little hex bolt and that, that's definitely better. Um, just want to move, so there's a little bit of movement in these. Hold that from behind. There's plenty of space behind to take that. So that should pull that in. That's done that. Hold the other one on the other end. Do the same. They just need to be dropped down. That's that. I'm just going to bend this ever so slightly. It's popped out, no problem. Reasonably happy with that. I'm just going to look down the line of that. That's looking good. Now, I don't know whether to start putting some dents in these or not, you know. Um, I probably will, actually, because I am thinking about uh, distressing this. So these will be sort of quite vulnerable. I'm going to do a bit more research on my in my research books, and then um, well, I'll take it from there. So I'm going to carry on, put the last one on. Um, hopefully that plays ball. Let's just make sure that is going to fit. Let's have a look, test it. I'm showing you all the frustrations of doing one of these. Just thought you might be interested in it. That's on there. Okay, that needs it. I'm going to have to put a slightly bigger bolt in that one as well. So I'll take that off because I think I'll try. There's not a lot of room. There's not a lot of. Uh, thread left on it by the time I think that might be all right actually by the time you put it through the thickness of the tank so if you're struggling like that um, put a longer fixing in I'm going to see if I can get away without doing that on that one. Oh yeah that's it that's in and just 
hold the back of that. And then just bend this up. There's a bit of movement on those back ones just to try and get the just to try and get the um I can see what's down here. That's it. So that's that side in. Very pleased with that. Actually really sets it off, doesn't it? Really does. So I'll crack on and do the other side now. So that's the other side done. Uh, before I pack everything away, a really important thing to do is just to look down the length of the inside of this to make sure that none of the bolts that are on the back of this interfere with the track. Um, and I'm looking down the I can see that it's it's clear but yeah it's clear I just think that maybe it might be worth just bending them out ever so slightly so I'm just going to do that not going to do any harm just make sure that you bend them you know don't put too much force in them yeah I'm happy with that I mean they're, they're, they're well clear and then the only other thing is now I'm really happy with um, the way things have turned out with this sprocket I'm actually going to put this hubcap on uh, really pleased that that's going on I'm sick and tired of seeing it i just want to make sure that that's going to be that's going to be all right just a little bit of a nudge there we go and that's why i just put my big old head in the way and that's it now i'm just going to put the very smallest amount of thread locker on this fixing because I may have to get it off but I don't want it working itself loose so that is that's it wow really 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 feels like we're on the final final hurdle of this amazing model so I've got quite a lot to do still I know it sounds crazy but there's still quite a bit to do but um, today was really just sort of getting the final bits of the build completed um, I'll just mop up here and um, I'll be back to camera shortly. Well, that's it for today's session. Um, I know it probably didn't seem like we've achieved a lot, but actually there's, there's hours and hours of work again in doing this small, small part of the build. But this is it. It's pretty much built. Um, now the, uh, the hard work is getting the gun and uh, the slew mechanism tested, uh, making sure that all works, all the servos work, um, and the gun is recoiling as, as it should do. Um, and once I'm happy with all of that, and I know I'm no longer have to concern myself with removing the glasses plate, then we'll get on to doing all the mock welding uh, and getting it prepared for painting. And there's a ton of mock welding. And I understand talking to some of the guys commenting on my channel that you'd like to see that. So I will do a session with, uh, we'll call it preparing the tank for painting, and it will involve cleaning it and prepping it and doing the mock welding and uh, some of the other elements that we've got to do ahead of painting. And then it's going to be uh, painting time. And, you know, then we'll get this roof uh, finished, painted, do any welding that needs to be done on this welding, uh, on this roof. And there is a lot to do on all of it. Um, and then I'll get it base painted um and we'll start doing the camo scheme on it and i'm still worrying about sort of distressing this but i think i need to um i uh, i'll definitely weather it but it's whether or not i want to start coming around taking a hammer to it and punching holes in it i, I just don't know it's so hard because once you've spent so long building something like this you kind of feel really attached to it and then to take a hammer to it and start punching holes in it, it just oh, it just just doesn't feel right um, so I haven't made that decision yet. I know a few of you are really keen for me to see that or, or see me do that. Um, I'm going to sort of take a bit more time to, to, to understand whether I want to do that or not, but I'll definitely be weathering it, um, and doing a camo scheme on it, which will be the first time I've done a camo scheme, scheme even uh, on a model this big. Uh, I've done it on very small models and, um, I'm a little bit apprehensive about doing it, but you know, I'm going to film it all and uh, hopefully you'll find that interesting. And then we've got a, a session on doing the arm packs kit, getting that all painted and ready to go on. And then we're almost there and it's really just sort of doing the sort of the final 
um, you know, the final the fine tuning, if you like, um, and getting this tank to sing and dance as I wanted to do. And then we'll get it out and do some driving with it. So it's been an amazing journey. Thank you for following me. Uh, we still have a small way to go on this tank. A few more weeks left of work to do. Um, but I hope you've enjoyed the journey as well as I have. I hope that my videos continue to inform and entertain you. If you've commented on this, thank you so much. And if you've subscribed to me, that means the world to me. Really appreciate all of your support. So until next time, I'm say it's me, Tony, building another amazing tank from Armatech, and I'll see you real soon.